When you look at our world, you will see that things are changing. 50 years ago, things are not as it is today. In every culture, there is love and respect for elders. In the days when I was going to school, people greet their father with utmost respect and they treat their mother with utmost respect. Nobody argues with their parents. But now things are so different that in some country, there's this law. You can't even beat your child to any level. You will be sued for child abuse. And that is why the moral decadence is becoming worse and worse every day. In Genesis chapter 6, the Bible says that man have corrupted the earth. We human beings, we have corrupted this world. What is the way out? Good morning. You are welcome to I Prevail with Joseph Adenuga. As usual, the Almighty God, the Creator, <clears throat> the Creator of the universe, your God, my God, your Father, my Father, put another word in my mouth this morning to speak to you, to encourage you, to motivate you, to inspire you and to bless you. My prayer is that God Almighty will make you to, <clears throat> excuse me, the Almighty God will make you to prevail. The power to prevail will come to you. The Lord will fill you with enormous strength and great grace to overcome the obstacles and odors of life. You will not be stranded. You will have power to overcome and to defeat the greatest enemy of your soul. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Our world is changing. And what is changing our world is not God. God is not the reason why this world is becoming bad. God is not the author of confusion, the Bible says. The Bible says God is good. And in him, there is no darkness at all. The Bible says that God is light. Now, and the Bible says God loves us. Now, if God loves us, it cannot be the reason why things are like this. When you look around the world, you are going to see many people in abject poverty, suffering. And I affirm to you that we are living in a world of abundance. We are living in a world where the things that God put here is enough for every one of us to be more than satisfied. Everyone living on planet Earth is supposed to be enjoying super abundance. There is abundance of everything. The things that God created on planet Earth, if we are 100 billion people, we cannot exhaust the treasures of God on Earth. And we are not even up to 7 billion people. Let's say approximately there are 7 billion people on planet Earth. What is that number compared to the enormous resources that God has placed there? Why are people suffering in the midst of plenty? It is because man has corrupted his way on the earth. Man has corrupted the earth. That is why the Bible talks about, you see, that even the earth and the creation is waiting for the earnest manifestation of the sons of God. Even the earth and the creation, they are groaning with pain. Because man have corrupted the earth, the earth is groaning in pain. And the earth is waiting for the earnest manifestation of the sons of God. You see, what is happening on planet Earth? God is looking for men and women. God is looking for people like you and me who is going to rise up and bring a change to what is happening on planet Earth. When you look around, you will see that there is no doubt that there are more evil people on planet Earth. But you see, we have a job to do. We have an assignment on our hands. You see, while we should face the problem that is befalling planet Earth because of us, we must look at those problems and not fight one against another. Let me tell you, God loves mankind. 
God loves people. No matter the color of their skin, their height or their stature, their profession or whatever they do, God loves human beings. That's the first thing I want you not to forget. God loves people. Whatever you do, this is how to sanitize the earth. This is how to deliver the earth from the corruption of evil people upon planet earth. Number one is to begin to walk with love. God is love. The first thing we must do to redeem the earth is that we must begin to walk in love. We must begin to act in love. We must begin to speak with love. You may say, but only me in the whole wide world, what difference can I make? You can make a difference. Your smile can make a difference. Your gentle touch can make a difference. Your soft word can make a difference. Your prayer for this world and for the people around you can make a difference. Do you know that prayer is miraculous? Prayer is one of the strongest vehicle of miracles. Your prayer can make a difference. You see, your act of giving can make a difference. Helping the person that is suffering beside you can make a difference. This world is ruled by the spirits of wickedness. We need now to start to begin to make a difference. We need to begin to make a difference. The one rand in your hand, if you are in South Africa, one rand can make a difference. You see? Begin now to make a difference. This is very important. This world is ruled by the spirit of wickedness. We must begin to turn things around by using the power of God's love. When we move in the spirit of love, when we talk to other people in the spirit of love, when we react to situation in the spirit of love, it may look as if we are making a very slight and so small a difference. But that small difference counts. If you make a small difference in your own world, and I make my own small difference in my world, and the other person make a small difference, we will begin to change things in this world. So that's the first thing I want you to see. The second thing I want you to see is that this world, as it is going, we need the children of God to rise. This is time to begin to love one another. It's not a time to criticize a pastor or criticize a prophet. This is not the time to talk them down. This is not the time to talk about their mistakes. This is not the time to, 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 to wage war against the people of God. Some people, they wage war against some pastors. And some of these pastors, they wage war on. They are pastors that are doing the will of God. Don't be among those who wage war against the instruments of God. You see? We must begin to operate by the love of God. And lastly, let me say this. There is pandemic. There is disease. There is holocaust in this world. We are the people that can stop it. You and I can begin to make a difference. It's time to wage war. The Bible says we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. We need to declare war against these forces of darkness that is ruling our world. It's time to declare war against sicknesses and diseases. It's time to declare war against hunger in prayer. It's time to enter into a spiritual warfare against what the enemy of our soul is doing. 
Many people are being killed and taken to hell every day. It's time to save the rest of mankind from the grip of the devil. Devil is ruling this world. It's time to fight and make the devil to release our people. Every man that goes to hell because we don't fight this war is not going to be good for us. We cannot continue to afford to allow our people to die and go to hell. We must begin to fight. We must begin to pray. We must begin to contribute our quota. Because if you don't fight, you don't know who will be next. We have children, we have husband, we have wife. We don't know what they are planning against any one of them. But if we begin to fight now, we will be able to stop the war. And we will be able to rescue some. And by, by, by so doing, we may be able to even rescue our children. We may be able to rescue our wife and our husbands because we fight. It's time to fight. Not with your brother. Not with your sister. It's time to fight against that devil. It's time to fight against that demon. It's time to fight against the spirit of wickedness that is out to kill your children before their time. If you don't fight, then they will submerge you. You have to kill that Goliath before he can kill you. If David never killed the Goliath, David will never have risen in Israel. You must be the David of your family. You must be the David of your generation. It's time to slay the Goliath. And this is a proverb. Think about it. This is where I'm going to stop today. Thank you for listening. The Lord bless you and the Lord increase you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you once again. It is well with your soul. This is your brother, your friend, your pastor, Joseph Adenuga, signing out and saying to you, be blessed and remain blessed.